can you start by telling us what is it that you are doing now? What am I doing now? Officially, I'm, I'm a professor of translation and intercultural studies in, in the University of Tarragona in Spain. Your areas of interest, your research topics at the moment. Uh, well, traditionally I've worked in translation studies. Uh, my PhD was in sociology, technically sociology, so I've, I've, I've adopted sociological approaches to translation. I'm interested in translators as people, and thereby in translation history, the history of translators. Uh, particularly of intercultures, of mediators between cultures. Well, how did you make the link from sociology to translating? Did you have in your PhD in sociology, did you have some kind of a connection to translating at that time or translators? That's strange. That's a good question. Um, I came from a comparative literature background. Yes. So the, the PhD research, I mean, I moved from comparative literature to sociology I think because of the Marxist ideas at the time. Yeah. You know, Marxism was pulling us towards a social view of culture. Yes. Um, and my topic was post-colonial. I was looking at the relations uh, in the late 19th century uh -huh. uh, between um, Spanish America, Spain and France when they adopted French culture to get away from the, the metropolis. Right. Yes. And I was comparing that with Australian writers and painters who would go to Paris instead of going to London right. to get yeah. away from the the the, the, the then post-colonial relationship, yeah. uh, well, from 1901 post-colonial, technically. Uh, so I was interested in those strategies, what I call strategies of the frontier, uh -huh. how people create space for their own culture, for their own freedom, if you like, by playing off one influence against the other. Yes. What's interesting is, in, in the doctoral thesis, no mention was made of translation. Yeah. Uh, although it was there, yeah, alongside many other mediating strategies, particularly commentaries, distribution of cultural values, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. Um, I was more interested in those discursive strategies than in translation at that time. Yes. Yeah. You may have been doing quite a lot of auto-translating while doing your work, translating your own ideas into the language of... Oh, in that metaphorical yeah. sense, it's always yeah. been around. Yeah. But if I go, I, I mean, I have looked back at the thesis, and um, I, I, it was strange that, for example, I, I looked at, at um, uh, Spanish American poets, I mean, not Brazil, but into Spanish, uh, working on French literature, and it's clear that there were some translations there, yeah. but more importantly were the commentaries on what was happening and the commentaries on aesthetics. And then original poems inspired by, or adopting verse forms, which was which, which its transfer of yes. a culture in. Yes. So, in a sense, the object itself was telling me, yeah, there are translations, but it's not mm. the most important part. Why? Because uh, the elites knew French. Yeah. Uh, and the same in, in Australia. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they tried to pretend yeah. to know French, but um, the translation wasn't the main thing. Mm. The main thing was the discourse on the other. Uh, have you done translation yourself? Yeah. Uh, how does the translation uh, you've done fit into your research? Yeah. That's interesting. When I did my undergraduate work in Australia, we had a course on translation uh, by a French professor called Didier Costa, who's been a major influence on me since then. And uh, I found this fascinating. Not because of the actual linguistic effects, but this was in, 19, in the 1970s, 73, 70, oh, no, no, 76, 77. And um, this was an age when structuralism was becoming post-structuralism. And I found in translation uh, an object that structuralism didn't explain well, and that post-structuralism did explain much better. And my interest was purely theoretical. Yeah, here is something that escapes from the linguistics we've inherited. Yeah. At the time, structuralism was the dominant science in the humanities. Um, and here's something new. And, and so, you know, when I started reading Derrida, Christéma, uh, at that period, I was like, what? You know, translation is what fits into this. So out of my purely theoretical interest, I, I wrote a, a master's dissertation. No, sorry, an honors dissertation on translation theory for, for a political economy. You can see the Marxism coming into it as well. And it was only after that, actually when I came to Spain after that, that I thought, well, I've, I've talked about translation, I might as well do something. 
And then I, I just entered my first book uh, after that theoretical interest. So the theory came yeah. first, and then, yeah. and then the practice. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on, when I did my doctorate, I remember walking out in 1985 and saying, never again, I'm not going to go back to a university ever again. These people don't know how to answer the real questions. Wow. And I went out and I had to survive in the world. Yeah. And what do you do when you have some languages and you're living in a foreign country? Yeah. Uh, I translated a lot. Yeah. And I organized conferences and uh, I did some publishing work. I worked for a publisher in Barcelona for a while. Um, and, and the translation practice came in there, surviving as yeah. a foreigner, uh, mainly in Spain and then in France. Um, uh, there's a link here to the next question, which you may have already partly answered, but what did you, uh, when you were 23, 24, was that the time that you were working in Australia with your master's thesis or something like that? Can you still remember what you did? I can't remember. <laughs> I, can't remember. I, can't remember. I was 18, I spent two years in Africa, I went back and did three years, so it's 20, 23, 24. I would have done my first three years, then I was in Spain, and I yeah. decided, yes, I decided to do the last, the, the honours okay. year on translation, yeah. 79, and I went around Europe buying books on translation, yeah. and I got five. That was yes. translation studies in 1979. Okay. Yeah, so that's... that's Can yeah. you still remember which ones they were? Pretty much so. Katarina Reis. Uh -huh. Uh, Werner Koller was an eye opener yes. because he had all the stuff from, from the, what was then East yeah, Germany, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. had the Russian, and now yeah. I recognize them as yeah, Russian yeah. theories, but I didn't yeah. know that at the time. Uh, Jean René Lamiral came yeah. out in, in 79. Yeah. And then we inherited George Steiner and Eugene Leider. Yeah. Um, Roger Bell had a book as well, so perhaps six. Yeah. That was sort of it. At yeah. That stage, yeah. 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 Uh, for about. Five years, ten years of your life, you've been focusing on localization. Uh, in your later writings, uh, you seem to have left somehow localization on the side. How think this? How, how big do you think this localization focuses on translation studies? How relevant it is? How is it? Hmm. How important it is for translation studies and for translation and translation teaching. I remember trying an experiment. I took a 1992 book on translation theory and I tried to rewrite it just putting localization instead of translation to see what was different. And something is different. I mean, what is new in localization is not adaptation to a locale. That's always been done. It's internationalization. It's the preparation of the project before going into many, uh, and, and the, the idealistic fantasy that you can remove culture from an object so it becomes a purely technocratic object and is then transferred. Okay? And I found that to be the new thing. I found it not to be a wholly good thing. It's very dehumanizing in its ideology and in its practice. Uh, but I thought it was very important to understand how people were thinking in that framework and the technologies that help us think in that framework. So I don't regret the time spent looking at that or looking closely at industry and kept trying to keep up to date with all the gurus who would tell us well, the next thing is, the next thing is, etc. Um, since then I've moved away from it, but not intellectually. Um, it was just a purely fortuitous occurrence with the Catholic Church with some, a blog in the United States that, that asked me about contemporary translation theory because uh, the American bishops had a new translation which updated the American English. They sent it to the Vatican expecting it to be approved. The Vatican sent it back to them, crossed out all the new pronouns and put in the old pronouns and made it closer to the Latin text than what they wanted. And I, well, how can this happen? I, did, I discovered the Catholic Church has this really great translation theory tradition. Um, which has moved from a very broad acceptance of variation in Vatican II to a very close literal, well, relatively close literalism uh, in the more recent uh, encyclicals. And, uh, and their framework for this is inculturation. And their idea is that we are moving cultures into the culture of the church, that's inculturation, and thereby enriching the culture of the church. 
So this is translation for them is framed by this double movement, taking the non-Christian culture, making it Christian, enculturation, and becoming richer as a result. Cannibalism or devouring the other. Or, you know. And I've found this fascinating. Firstly, it's a model of internationalization, that thing you find in internationalization. It isn't this neutral object. It's the locus which will attract. Yeah. If I look at the way Microsoft sets up its, its translation operations, or anybody using localization ideology, but Microsoft, have, they're doing this. They're doing what the Catholic Church has theorized before them. Or the European Union, when we accept new member states. Mm. It's exactly the same thing that's going on. So I've been moving from localization towards an awareness of large scale, like on the level of centuries, of the way cultures are using translation to produce new cultural forms, new cultural relations. Is that what you would say is the focal point in translation studies at the moment of what would you see as the main, the most important thing that could be done today? You know what, I don't, ca I don't care anymore. Study. I don't no. care about translation studies, I don't care about any discipline. I think we've got to do research that's interesting in itself. For the humanities, but addressing the real problems that are out there. Yeah. And whether or not it's translation yeah. studies, so what? Yeah. Uh, I've reached that point. And, and the same for our training programs, for the doctoral programs. I, I think we've got some methodologies, we've got some knowledge, but other disciplines have a whole lot more that we have to work with yeah. and, and cooperate with them. Well, and on this positive note, <laughs> we conclude the, the interview. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. <laughs>